Hello and welcome to Potter Watch from Page to Screen episode 28. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Lucy. Last time we discovered the Chamber of Secrets has been opened before. <gasps> <gasps> Today we'll be stealing some ingredients and doing a spot of jewelry. Mm, lovely spot of jewelry. Dueling. Dueling. I feel like I always say dueling like like jewel. Jewel like jewel. Like J. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same with like Dune. Dune. Like sand Dune. Yeah. I say June. <laughs> yeah. June in it. Dune. Tuesday in it. <laughs> Tuesday. Exactly. <laughs> Look exactly how I feel. June. Yeah. Anyway. Let us know if anyone <laughs> recognizes the, the the reference that we were making with Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you'll you'll um, automatically be entering into this friendship. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, and if not, can we link the YouTube clip in the description? Because always yes. really bothers me when people are like, oh, see if you know the reference. And I'm like, oh, that sounds familiar, but I'm not sure. And then I'm like, well, what is what it? What is it? Yeah. So, lovely, lovely little bit of British comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, we're, we're here to talk about... We're here to talk about Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another good bit of British uh, fantasy. So as we read in the last episode, the book describes all the chaos that's going down in Hogwarts after Colin gets petrified. Mm. We have Ginny being upset, people buying amulets, etc, etc. In the film, it looks like nobody particularly cares about <laughs> our, our boy Colin, because um, it's just not mentioned. <laughs> yeah. No one says anything. This, uh, this makes me really sad, because mm. it makes me sad that Colin is very quickly just kind of forgotten and, and disregarded in the films and even when they introduce nigel as kind of a replacement even he is quite quickly sidelined as well yeah it's um, really strange and i think i maybe second to fred genuinely i think colin's death was the most like affecting to really me. that's so yeah. interesting i yeah, that really... could not have cared less but i think really? yeah but i think now <laughs> uh -huh. after we've done potter watch if I read it again, well, if, huh, when I read it again, I, w I think I will be super upset because I'm like, oh, yeah. it's <laughs> Harry's first love. <laughs> yeah. no, Not that Harry loved him, anyway. Yeah, I, I just remember as a, because I, obviously by that point he is, I mean, he's, he's still young, that's why it's so sad. Yeah, yeah, like that's what made kid, me sad. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it, as a kid reading that I hadn't quite, I didn't quite have the reading capacity to quite understand I mean, I understood, but it didn't quite register that he now was a 16-year-old kid rather than, like, my age. Just that that That's kind true. of... Because Fred dying is sad, all these characters dying is sad, but they kind of know what they're fighting for and put themselves on the line mm. for and are aware of what they're doing. But Colin was just this, like, he was just so pure. And I feel like yeah. he really he really kind of encapsulated that. You know what, actually? I will give this example. One of my mates here... So, now I feel like I'm talking about one of my mates getting killed by Voldemort. Anyway. <laughs> but there's, like, I, I'm very excited about being at this uni and it makes me very happy to be here. And every now and again, I have these moments where I'm like, oh, this is so exciting. I'm so happy to be here. Mm. Which, you know, kind of like, at Hogwarts, they're like, oh, this is so great. It's yeah. so cool that we're here. And I have this friend who is, he is that energy just all the time. Wow. And it's so lovely to be around yeah. because every time I'm with her, I'm like, yeah, this is great. I, I wish I was here. more like that. Yeah, and Colin is that to me. Every time you see Colin, he's so excited. He's like, "Oh yeah, they're at Hogwarts." Yeah, they're at this a is school. like amazing. Yeah, and I feel like him dying was that magic and excitement of Hogwarts personified as a person. Die yeah. like it, it. It really. I don't think he even he doesn't even really die in the films, does he? No, I don't think he does. He doesn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I always imagined yeah. him like weirdly enough in the seventh whenever i read the seventh book mm -hmm. and read that scene i imagine a 12 year old dying but then you well, saying exactly. 16 year old i'm like oh yeah he would have yeah. been like 15 or 16 depending on when he was born yeah he would have been around there that's crazy right yeah and um, maybe that's why maybe i'm kind of just trying to justify but for some reason his death really like him no, and Fred, I mean, they were my main two being upset about sure. things people dying <laughs> yeah. i said things because they're characters but they're yeah, not yeah, actual yeah. people but no. people dying that's Slightly not different. like that's not something you have to explain <laughs> yeah no but it's it, it is a bit, a Maybe, bit strange that it's over i should have to justify why i don't didn't care about <laughs> yeah. it at all. 
and why Hedwig was the one that was so yeah. upset. Oh, Hedwig was sad because it was that, that same. It was that me. same kind of symbolism. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah. We'll get to death soon. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have so much to say. Anyway. <laughs> So then Moaning Myrtle is finally introduced in the film mm. as the trio are brewing Polyjuice Potion. Oh, I said that a bit. Polyjuice Potion. <laughs> <laughs> um, this has been done ages ago in the book at Nick's death day party. I love this change. I think this, I think it makes sense that she's introduced in mm. her kind of, you know, natural, natural setting and also her place of death. Yes, that's her place. Yeah. Yeah. And to introduce a new character, it kind of in their natural environment and yeah. their like natural habitat kind of thing i'm of i'm of two I minds like because i really agree with you but at the mm. same time it gives that vibe of like teachers sleep at school um <laughs> <laughs> you know it's yeah, like yeah. what you what's moaning myrtle doing at, here like she uh -huh. should be in the bathroom but she's yeah. like a person who has free will yeah. and goes wherever she wants it, to it's weird but i do agree with mm -hmm. you no I, I i agree and i like i like that we see ghosts like letting their hair down and having fun in different settings yeah. i think that's really funny but also at this point we haven't met myrtle so yeah. we're not like what's myrtle doing at a party yeah I, yeah i do think maybe she should have like swapped it around where yeah moaning myrtle was introduced in the mm. bathroom but then later on it was yeah. the death day it... party or something for that same reason i love because but you never until then you never think about ghosts having like a social life yeah <laughs> like yeah doing anything it's, it's such a fun kind of little nod to what they get up to yeah um mm -hmm. but I, I personally and i think the main reason they changed this was purely because you know they just cut out the death day party and yeah like, well we've got to introduce her somewhere but i think it it creates a slightly stronger mm. I don't know. Association. I, yeah, I really like it. I enjoy it a lot. Yeah. Um, I always forget that that that's not how she's introduced. In the yeah, book. same. Um, in the film, to introduce Myrtle, Ron points out that it seems a bit risky to be brewing a polyjuice potion in broad daylight in the middle of a girl's bathroom. Hermione explains that no one goes into that bathroom because of moaning Myrtle. <laughs> Disrupting. I don't she get that. Because moaning Myrtle mm. can easily tell anyone else <laughs> that they're brewing potions in there yeah and moaning myrtle does not like them yeah. she fancies harry but that's not established until later on yeah so i so weird i'd never considered this me yeah, neither it's... that's why i love doing this because <laughs> i never thought about that before no <laughs> it's weird yeah the strange thought process to be like oh yeah like no one ever comes in here because there's always someone in yeah, here. yeah but there's someone <laughs> that's, there that's, like yeah the, she is the, witnessing do you hear what this you're saying? yeah and if you cross her she could easily tell everyone what you're doing <laughs> yeah weird <laughs> i guess it gives like moaning myrtle a bit of um <laughs> true like what um... is that a bit of uh ammunition yeah towards yeah them. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, maybe maybe she's playing the long game. Yeah. I respect that. Go on, Myrtle. <laughs> um, of course, we all know what goes down. Myrtle introduces herself in her own funny little way <laughs> and plunges herself back into the toilet and we get this great one-liner from Hermione in the film where she says, she's a little sensitive. <laughs> Love that. Lovely. Yeah, it's a great one. Mm -hmm. Now the timelines from book to film get a bit tricky as the film goes on to duelling with Gildroy and the petrification of nearly headless <laughs> Nick and Justin Finch Fletchley. Whoa, with a tongue twister. <laughs> yeah. Um, but seeing as the book goes into Christmas, we will focus on comparing that first. To establish its Christmas in the film, we see horse-drawn carriages riding across the lake. We assume that it's to take students home for the holidays, which it most likely is. Mm. Of course, these carriages canonically are drawn by Thestrals, which would be invisible to most students. But this wasn't a thing in the early mm. books, so I think it's something that is, you know, we can't be like, <laughs> do, do, do test rules. It's like, yeah, because yeah. they, they weren't a thing. Yeah. Um, so I think we can forgive them for that. Um, and so that the overall effect is quite lovely. Mm. Carriages in the snow, very Christmas card. Yeah, white horses, um, yeah. With, uh, do you see Hogwarts in the back of that shot? I think Am so. I think the right thing? Yeah, it's quite nice. Although... Is that a common thing for horses to ride across frozen lakes? Um, How? No. 
Um, I don't know if I'm, I guess frozen legs usually are quite stable. I'm thinking it's like an ice skating rink. Like I'm just imagining these horses just like stacking it. But I think usually it's quite stable to, to move yeah. on, aren't they? I mean, I'm assuming um, that it's the lake. Yeah. When I'm looking at the it, picture, it's, it's very flat. <laughs> yeah. 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 Would, would the horses like slip and slide? <laughs> See, that's what, that's... I mean, I some that's, that's the thing. Sometimes frozen lakes, you can easily walk over them and it's chill. Yeah. But I, so I assume, oh, you know, maybe it's enchanted. I don't know. But I, in my mind, I'm like, how? Also, where are they? I don't know. Like coming. Like, did they get them down to the boathouse? Yeah, know. I'm looking at the What's picture, and you can see Hogwarts in the background, and it just looks like they're ca like the the students have waited at the bottom of the rocks. <laughs> They've just Done. randomly come up. All right. <laughs> so nice. I'm guessing, yeah, it probably is somewhere near the boathouse. Yeah. Um, but that wasn't added until later on. Oh, true. Yeah, we can we could still dream <laughs> yeah. that it that it would make sense in some yeah. way. This it does make me kind of because obviously usually they just like go the roundabout way around the lake. It kind of mm -hmm. makes me chuckle to imagine Dumbledore looking out the window and being like, "The lake's frozen. We can send them across the lake. That'll cut the travel time in half." Like. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I mean, it looks <laughs> lovely, and it's it's a nice little it's a nice little setup. It's a nice kind of establishing. Yeah. Establishing shot of it's like oh it's winter it's Christmas everyone's going home nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cozy. Very cozy. Very sweet. <laughs> um, Ron and Hermione sign up to stay at Hogwarts over Christmas because they heard that Malfoy is also staying, and they think that this is the perfect opportunity to use the Polyjuice potion. <laughs> I. Always think of Hermione and Ron's parents, like when they yeah. stay at home for for yeah. Christmas. Like it's Christmas. Yeah. Do they not? And they're do they twelve. Not mind? Yeah, they're twelve. Also, like, the, don't like the Malfoys care? I would well, like clearly they... not. Oh yeah, no, true, true. I don't, I don't think but you'd they think that care. they would want. They give me like big formal family. They're the family who like dress up for Christmas True, dinner. True, yeah. And, like, maybe have a big it was like extended... controversial in the Malfoy. Um, yeah. But maybe politics. it was like that Malfoy wanted to come home, but Lucius told him to stay because of the whole heir of Slytherin thing. Maybe he was like, oh, you can help him out and stuff. Oh, that's true. Maybe. Um, yeah, I don't know. Up. Good point. Possibly. Yeah. Why isn't there a mention of like angry letters like, please come yeah. home? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Especially, uh, especially Hermione's parents. I don't know yeah. why, but like, maybe it's because like she's an only child mm. or because they're muggles. But for some reason that really like cuts deep. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, that is odd. Yeah. <laughs> Screw you. I'm staying yeah. at school. I prefer yeah. school to right. you. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's that saying something. Very strange. And a bit sad. <laughs> but, yeah. Weird. In the film, the Polyjuice Potion is made and ready to go without the trio getting into any shenanigans. But in the book, <laughs> they have to steal two ingredients right towards the end from mm. Snape's cupboard. In a potions glass, Harry creates a distraction by throwing a lit firework into Goyle's potion <laughs> so that Hermione can slip out, steal the ingredients, which are bicorn horn and boomstang skin, and get back in all while Snape isn't looking. Mm. I googled bicorn because I figured it would just be like similar to a unicorn horse mm. with two horns instead of one. Mm -hmm. um, but according to Wikipedia, Bisexual it's actually quite unicorn. different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. I'm a bi corn, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just just sweet corn who's who goes both ways. <laughs> sweet um, corn. <laughs> unicorn with a sweet corn. <laughs> like, corn on the cob on his head. Um, um, <laughs> what? What was? It? Anyway. Um, <laughs> So apparently it is actually quite different, um, oh. according to our wonderful source of Wikipedia. Um, and the definition of it actually kind of made me laugh. So oh, okay, I won't know. Okay. It says, Bicorn is a creature... Off uh, obviously this, is, this isn't Harry Potter specific, this is just kind yeah, of generic, just like, mythology. folklore mythology. Yeah. yeah. It says, Bicorn is a creature often described as a part panther, part cow creature with a human-like face that devours kind-hearted and devoted husbands. <laughs> <laughs> what? Apparently, the creature is particularly plump because these kind-hearted and devoted husbands are in large supply. Oh, that's nice. 
Yeah. I also just want you to Google bicorn okay, and look at the first... I was going to say, what part is is panther? look at the look at the on mine it, look at the first pencil drawing the black and white like line drawing oh my god it's i don't, it looks I don't know like how... a pug or something yeah this depiction particularly is not some of the other ones here do just look like unicorns with two horns but yeah this you know quite a few yeah. of them are just nice. these weird little like it's the human a human like face that is the rest of it's like okay, and it's like with a, with a human face, it's a, it's a person face on the front. Mm. It's like oh yeah, is okay. that its tail? <laughs> no. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, at the back, maybe. its tail is going. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Actually. Yes. Uh, let, let's it go. Yes. Looks for my own like personal, something else. <laughs> for, for for my sake, <laughs> let's please say that's its tail. Yeah. <laughs> but it also. I guess maybe they're perfectly in line, but in this drawing it only has two legs. Yes. Yeah. It, 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 I guess it does have four just behind, but... Oh, that's really weird. There's one, like, kind of beigey, yellowy... Yeah, of the two. Yeah. I like that, though. That's my favourite. That's how I want to imagine it. Yeah. I What's like that the they've skeletal? given them some character. Or is that just the skeleton uh, of it? Oh, uh, mate. Uh... Very no, I, no, that is. I think that is just a really weird bony one. Mm. It's very grumpy. Anyway, it ju <laughs> I just I googled it, figuring oh it'll just be a unicorn. But yeah. Like one step away from a tri triceratops, you know. <laughs> like it's you know, it's a unicorn with two horns. And then, yeah, the description. It's the it's the because I was like pup panther, sure cow, but weird, but okay. And then I read <laughs> yeah. human like face. And also that it devours husbands. It just made me chuckle. So I thought yeah. I would share that with you. That is um, that is really funny. I'm yeah, glad you did that. I I never questioned it either. <laughs> Oh yeah, bicon. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh. You learn something new every day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's where we catch up with the film, and then we go into the dueling. So the film isn't too off track. Lockhart's little speech is taken word for word straight out of the book, but what the film does add is him taking off his cape and throwing it at some <laughs> girls in the crowd. <laughs> Now, am I the only one that thinks that this is really creepy? <laughs> like, he's he's got to be, like, in his 30s. <laughs> and he's, like, willingly, like, egging them on. Yeah. I, I mean, I think, I think it's just a, I think it's more of just a, any attention from anyone. He's going to yeah, facilitate true. that. He's like, that's oh, true. you guys are, I'll, I'll, I'll give you something to make a fuss over. You know, it's like. Yeah. He just he loves he loves being loved. Centre of attention. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Okay. But I, I see where you're coming from. If, <laughs> if this happened in a real school, if a teacher like took off their lab coat and like threw it on some students in physics, because they knew how desirable they were. Yeah, it would be odd. Yeah, with the knowledge that yes, these girls do have a crush on me. Yeah. And I am encouraging that. Yeah. It's weird. No, that that would that would be strange. Yeah. It's, it is strange. It's, I think this strange. shows what we've like talked about before with like Lockhart's ch childlike yeah. um, yeah. as well. Yeah, no, he almost forgets that. <laughs> <laughs> New low. Yeah. <laughs> the introduction of Snape in the film is not word for word, but it is extremely similar. Um, the, mm -hmm. It only misses out the beginning when Gildora says, He tells me he knows a tiny little bit about dueling himself. <laughs> <laughs> and of course in the film there's Alan Rickman's stunning performance where he mm. like seems to fly up the stairs instead of climbing them. <laughs> um I also I've literally just thought of this right now. Why doesn't Gilderoy get Flitwick to join him? Because mm. Flitwick mm. is like a yeah. known dueling champion. Yeah. yeah, stupid, weird, random, stupid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Makes <more laughs> sense. P purely yeah. for fun little plot purposes within the universe More Snape it's time. stupid makes no sense yeah but then it's like why isn't snape the dueling champion yeah that, that's the thing is it there is no need for it to be flitwick it adds yeah nothing it, it's never really mentioned it, i like, like it, that it's flitwick yeah but why <laughs> yeah no in terms of like narrative device mm -hmm. 
what a way to need to know mm-hmm. b if you're going to make someone a dueling champion like make it someone who it can be like relevant like speak. yeah this is one of those things that's added that doesn't we don't need yeah it. yeah and then we all know what happens next snape casts expelliarmus and gilderoy is completely blown off his feet in the book and the film hermione asks do you think he's all right and in the film <laughs> do you like in the film ron replies who cares whereas in the book harry and ron say the line who cares together mm-hmm. yeah. i i like this mm. I, I like it in the book and i like it in the film mm. and i think both work where they are mm-hmm. i feel like it like saying lines in unison is always fun but i feel like when you actually see it play out like actually in unison it's yeah. it's just a bit it's a bit cheesy yeah um, if they're saying something at the same time it's not quite the same often it gets a bit like cl- just clunky yes um so i think it works well in both and i think ron was of the two i think ron was the right choice to give this line to mm-hmm. for for the book characters at least to the um, film for the film characters the, yeah yeah for the yeah, I was going to say, one. if the book was entirely ac- accurate, if the, right. sorry, if the film was entirely accurate, uh-huh. it would be Harry <laughs> who says it, true. not Ron. True, yeah, no, that's true. Although they both, they both kind of have this I think kind either of, mean, of them saying sarcastic it, humour. Yeah, sarcastic. it makes sense that they are both saying it in the book, yeah. but it just, I think mm. it, like, can you imagine if they both just went, who, and trying to get, like, child, like, it would have just been awkward, I think. yeah. And a bit, yeah. I mean, not that this film is not cheesy, but um, <laughs> it would have been a step too far, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's there's a certain amount of cheese that you can have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't have too much cheese, right? I mean, I'm a bit yeah. lactose intolerant, so I think it's good that they stopped it. Yeah. <laughs> In the book, Gilderoy then calls for everyone to pair up on the floor and practice disarming spells, um, like Expelliarmus. Um, mm-hmm. Gilderoy calls up a volunteer pair to demonstrate blocking after the students have been sparring for a bit in their pairs. And in the film, he suggests Harry and Ron, and Snape says, we'll be sending Potter to the hospital wing in a matchbox. In reference that to... Good. That was a good one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to The matchbox was particularly... Anyway. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just take a bow. <laughs> <laughs> That's in reference to Ron's broken wand, but in the book, Gilderoy suggests Neville and, I'll just pace myself, Justin Finch Fletchley, nailed it, Mm. Um, (laughs) and Snape says his matchbox line in reference to Neville's lack of skills. Mm. But I I appreciate the film in this instance, Mm. like keeping the running gag of like Ron's broken wand. I quite like it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I was thinking it makes, um, I feel like it kind of makes more sense for Lockhart's character to pick mm. Harry because he's like, he's so famous. He's like, oh, let's get Harry Potter up here to put on a show. Yeah. He also he gives you the vibes of those teachers who just don't bother or just would always mess up names, kind of like Slughorn in, in this Yeah, like, like he... I'll remember the important ones, but exactly, none of the others exactly. matter. Mm, yeah. That's true. It so... does seem weird that. Gilderoy Lockhart even knows like Neville is kind of understandable but Justin Finch Fletchley yeah. seems really No way random. is he remembering the name Justin Finch Fletchley. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. Like, <laughs> that's not doesn't doesn't quite roll off the tongue. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I like the films. I like that he's like, oh Potter, you get up here, you know. I think it, yeah. it kind of adds yeah. to his him wanting to rub shoulders with the right people. You know? Yeah, yeah. If I have Potter, it means that everyone else sees that I'm all buddy mm. buddy with mm-hmm. the chosen one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, the boy who lived at this point, not the chosen one. Right. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the book, Gilderoy at least attempts to teach Harry how to block, in which he twiddles his <laughs> wand and just drops it. <laughs> Harry and Malfoy share their scared you wish lines which are in both book and film and harry in the book asks gilderoy what to do gilderoy says just do what i did harry and harry replies what drop my wand <laughs> <laughs> i i love book harry and yes I, I wish we had more of this kind of thing in the films because it's uh, he's like one of my favorite characters genuinely and yeah they just hit him 
they just did him a bit dirty in the in the films. Yeah, I wonder whether Dan could have pulled off sarcasm enough at that age. I think now he I could. No, uh, that's the thing. Now I feel like now he he just he is the but uh, yeah i can't imagine like 12 year old daniel radcliffe yeah. although if if you've seen that scene when he like rolls his eyes at hermione and it's quite it's quite badly acted but it's it's it it, it cures my soul when? sometimes it, i can't remember if it's a deleted scene or if it is in the movie i think it's t one or two definitely one or two i think it might be one and hermione's <laughs> talking about reading or exams or something and Harry's like sat with his arms crossed, laying on the table in the great hall. Oh yes, he, like, it is the deleted his... scene. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It, yeah, um, he does pull that off quite surprisingly <laughs> well. Yeah, and that was that was them just being like, oh, like look annoyed. Uh, that, that vibe I get is that they were just like, oh, like be, like you know, roll your eyes, and he's just like, oh, he just looks so yeah. exasperated. But I kind of agreed that at that age, I think he was just like too pure almost. To, <laughs> yeah, to be as like rude as he sometimes is in the book. Mm -hmm. In the film, Harry casts Richter Sempra, which simply blasts Malfoy back. Canonically, Richter Sempra is a powerful tickling charm, which of course mm. makes it difficult to do anything apart from laugh, so the spell isn't used accurately in the film. Uh -huh. I am just going to Google what Richter Sempra means, because it's got to have some kind of Latin Mm. meaning oh yeah so it's derived from the latin rictus meaning the expanse of an open mouth and the latin semper mm. meaning always so the overall meaning is always laughing uh um, yeah but nice. the the effect is feeling like you're being tickled yeah which i think that's like if i was in hell that's what people could do to torture <laughs> me <laughs> it's just tickled me the whole time Oh. I have like I have punched people uh, accidentally wow. before yeah. because I hate tickling so much. It's just wow. a guttural re reaction. Yeah. Jeez, oh. <laughs> I think that's an interesting spell as a parallel to like sectum sempra, it's like mm. two oh, yeah. something sempra that are very very different. Uh, True. Very different spells. Um, yeah. But yeah, it is. It's strange that they just misused a spell. Mm. Um, especially one that's like the word itself literally it, it literally means always laughing mm. and they're like let's just throw in a snake <laughs> well oh wait no, no no oh no this isn't the snake charm is it this is the a... back oh yeah that's yeah. E uh, that's even weirder because i was it's like oh weirder. i guess it sounds a bit like like semper is a bit snaky <laughs> semper, yeah, yeah that's just mm. that's just random i guess i i think maybe the writers were trying to just expand the expand the world and make the scene kind of exciting mm. by using a spell that we haven't heard but why not just use maybe one like correctly? having <laughs> having someone like just randomly laughing without knowing what the actual effect is it would like maybe seem a bit goofy but they could why not just use I, I agree that they they shouldn't have done that because that would just be a bit yeah goofy like you say that and, was like, weird do a but stunning spell use a different yeah yeah. Use another spell that exists that we haven't heard before that makes What's more sense. Stupefy, stupefy as well. Yeah, yeah. It is a bit of an odd one that kind of it like disrupts the canon a bit in a way that is not necessary. You know, it takes you out. Yeah, it takes you out of the mm. the bubble that a film creates. Yeah. yeah. Or all the kind of uh, some some choices like this, it makes it a struggle to kind of. For people who want to kind of um what's the word like integrate the the films and the book kind of mm. as to one it, it kind of it ruins the ability to do that I yeah <clears throat> that's one of those things that seems small and i think they would be like oh that's really yeah. small but it's actually quite a big change yeah yeah and it's almost like when they do bigger changes that they commit to for like plot reasons or for pacing reasons i'm like mm. yeah makes sense sure but it, like just say a different word it's yeah really, it's really yeah uh, you could it, easily ask like jk rowling was with them a lot of the yeah. times and was readily yeah, available on, on and, purpose yeah, yeah. yeah why not ask her like is there another spell that we can use that uh -huh. does have the effect of blasting back yeah um, but yeah i guess they just richter tempera sounds sounds cool as well it does sound cool yeah, yeah. it's funny that it's a uh, tickling <laughs> spell <laughs> it's one of the most useful ones they use it so much 
um, in like really serious fights as well. Mm. But I can see why it would be really useful. Like yeah. being tickled constantly. That's that's terrible. It's mm. awful. <laughs> I wonder if it has like different levels of effect on people depending mm. on how ticklish they are, or if, or if it like gets the, the skill same. level of the the wizard. Yeah. True. If like the skill level is really low, you get somewhere that they aren't particularly ticklish, yeah. and then the skill level <laughs> is high, they tickle like where it really hits. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be fun. Hmm. In both the book and the film, Malfoy conjures a snake, uh, and that's Serpent hmm. Sortier, to land in front of Harry, and Gilderoy only angers it further by sending it up ten feet into the air. So that's in both book and film but in the film the snake turns to justin finch fletchley nailed it again after <laughs> after harry speaks parcel tongue in the mm. book it turns on justin straight away and it's harry's parcel tongue that gets it to back off so in the film we don't know what harry says but from reading the book we know that he says leave him harry expects justin to be grateful in the book but he's even more scared and both the book and the film he says what do you think you're playing at <laughs> this fear is quite understandable in the film as the snake wasn't mm. doing anything until harry got involved but in the book justin being scared seems unreasonable until mm. you consider that it has little to do with the snake and yeah. more to do that he's scared of harry using parcel tongue yeah 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 I hope that all makes sense. It's rather a long right. I, <laughs> Yeah, I think that's... I understand you. I, I get what's going on. Yeah. I kind of wish that the film had stuck with how they did past tongue in the first film. Yes. Um, with just him speaking normal oh, like, that's English. True. Until that would be after, so good. Until after Harry himself discovers that he can speak it. So we kind of go on that journey with him. And at least yeah. a bit of mystery about why everyone's so freaked out and what's going on until Hermione explains. Yeah. And then when he becomes self-aware of it, then they can do the fun, cool, like, hissing. Mm -hmm. um, I recently YouTube. watched a video about why you should skip the first five minutes of Tangled, like the introduction yeah. bit. I, I, I have seen that's been on my watch list for a while. Yeah. I think this has a similar, like, vibe. It, it would be more, mm. yeah, more mysterious. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. We're kind of following her because he already has spoken parcel tongue. Yeah, and isn't and that just... isn't it like that in the book that he just says, "Leave him." Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the the book, the book. It doesn't say anything about like he's not aware of it. He's just like, "Hey, leave him alone. Like, cut it out." Yeah, I think. Um, just same as the first book. He's just speaking. Oh yeah, here um, we go. All he knew was that his legs were carrying him forward as though he was on casters and that he had shouted stupidly at the snake, leave him. Miraculously, mm. inexplicably, the snake slumped to the floor, docile, as thick as a thick black garden hose. Its eyes yeah. now on Harry. Yeah, so he has no idea. Uh -huh. He knew the snake wouldn't attack anyone now, though how he knew it, he couldn't have explained. Mm. Yeah, I, it, I feel like... It also feels a little bit inconsistent because it's like, why is he speaking English in the first film and now he's suddenly... Yes. It, I feel like it would just... They could ex they could have it as a language, as like a new a sound, mm -hmm. and still explain why it didn't sound like that in the first film if they just waited until Harry was aware of it. Yeah. Because um, otherwise we're like, whoa, oh, he's speaking a weird language to the snake. It's, you know... Yeah, and um, then it's not explained and it's like... Well, <laughs> yeah. you have to wait next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just English, um, and then it's and then you realise, oh, everyone else is hearing something different. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it, and it. They should keep it more consistent. Yeah, it kind of puts you in his head more. I don't know. I suppose it's different because it's not a first person. But then in the uh, anyway, I I wish they had had him speaking English. Yeah. I keep saying actual words, but, but what, what I mean is not a made-up language. Yes, I know what um, you mean by actual words. Yeah. Like, actual, actual words, the real language. <laughs> but, like, not uh, snake talk <laughs> is what I mean <laughs> yeah. when I say actual words. Yeah. I also mm. just want to mention here mm. the um, cameraman who we see in oh, this yeah. scene. It's when Malfoy is um, getting picked up off the floor or when he's been blown backwards or something. You see just a um, camera operator just stood amongst the students with a massive camera, just 
it's just there just to yeah film me. um i i find it even when i'm watching it i find it very difficult to see even when it's pointed out to me yeah it's that, that's the thing is i i think i had to have it pointed out it's not something i noticed so it's like mm. it's one of those things that it's like it's the the cost of the time of trying to deal with that it's like no one will notice it's such a quick cut uh, um yeah but it's just it just makes me laugh because when you pause at the right bit there is just there's just some guy just stood with a bunch <laughs> of like stu- he's just like in a jeans and a t-shirt like it's amusing do to you me, know so. in that video what the time stamp is because i don't think i pardon oh 339 i have written yeah. it yep. oh good okay because i think it would be frustrating for people to know that it's there but not be able to find it so it's at 339 i will link it in the description let's see pause no i can't see it oh yeah there he is <laughs> yeah right in the corner i expected him to be like higher than the students right. but yeah no he's, he's on the he's same quite... level yeah right on the left hand side and he's just like yeah got glasses on and a weird coat and <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's so odd and it is it is so quick like it cuts him on the floor and then very quickly is panning up so it's fine yeah it's I mean, he's, one he's very second. in the dark as well yeah like blonde hair and... you could like even if you saw it you could be like oh that's probably like a helper teacher there to yeah you know, oversee because yeah. you don't see um well i mean i don't see camera equipment i can't i don't notice it i mean you can just there's like a kind of boxy you can see a sort of boxy thing that's oh just, like... just in uh, yeah, like, yeah, a, like the the, the kid in front of him is the kid in front of him is kind of um, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the kid in front of him is kind of covering most of. I mean, they obviously blocked it in a way that he would be covered, and maybe moved around. And, yeah. But it just, I, it just always makes me laugh now when I when yeah. I see this come up. I'm like, look, um, it, <laughs> that's the guy. Just, yeah. Well, I love things like that. Okay, then the trio has their conversation about being a parcel mouth, which again is barely changed from book to film. Mm. In the film, Hermione explains, it's not a very common gift, Harry. <laughs> I'm nailing it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> In the book, as usual, it just goes to show how good this film is, by the way. I think this mm. film is really quotable. Yeah, here's the thing. The third will always be my favourite, and I think it will always yeah. be objectively the best. But I think I feel about the second film how most people seem to feel about the first film. Mm. I don't partic- I don't have much emotional attachment to the first film. Mm-hmm. I never really watched it. I think it's a bit boring. The second film, I there was a point where I could just recite it beginning to end. Yeah. I love the second and film And I was so like much. that with the third, but now that right. you have been saying this, and now that I've like been having to watch clips to to write Mm -hmm. this and research about this it is such a good film it's so good and And loads of people rate it as last but i think it's one one of my favorites now i would say it's in my top half yeah i think so too or at least i don't know it it used to be like right at the bottom right but yeah i'm glad that we're doing this because it's rekindling well not rekind this kindling (laughs) (laughs) straight up building the fire (laughs) yeah yeah anyway right yes hermione explains that it's not a very common gift in the book as usual it's ron who says this not Mm -hmm. hermione so they make hermione smarter again Mm -hmm. in the film it's established that harry had no idea that he was saying anything different than just normal English. Mm. Um, but as you said before, it doesn't have quite as much weight in the film. Yeah. In the book and the film, Hermione explains that being a parcel mouth is seen as bad because the head of Slytherin was famous for being a parcel mouth. And in both the book and the film, Ron says, now the whole school is going to think you're his great, great, great grandson or something. And Hermione says that ominous line, he lived a thousand years ago. For all we know, you could be. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I love Emma that one. is on point in this film. <laughs> she's just killing it. Yeah, <laughs> with no, her she, lines like she's the. She's doing great. <laughs> what was it that we said? Was it in this episode? She's a little sensitive. Well, was it in the last episode? Ah, oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. She is so talented. Mm. So talented. <laughs> Okay, so that concludes the book-to-film comparison portion of this 
Potwatch episode. So we'll mm. hand over to Lucy for the Marauders map section. Lovely jubbly. Oh, I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Nice. <laughs> um, that was really natural and organic. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a pro. <laughs> so, uh, our main new location here is Money Myrtle's bathroom. Mm. I struggled to find whether... So, I, I assume for at least parts... Well, no, definitely for at least parts of filming, this was a set. And I am pretty certain that it was a set the whole time. Mm. But I did find a lot of information about a bathroom at Gloucester Cathedral. And I think it was just very heavily based off and kind of modelled after one of the bathrooms there. Yeah, because I've been um, to Gloucester Cathedral. Uh-huh. And they were, like, very proudly yeah. um, showing the Harry Potter stuff. And there wasn't mm -hmm. the bathroom, but I can see how they would have taken mm -hmm. inspiration from it, definitely. Yeah, yeah obviously, the it's a very what's even the word kind of practical set like mm. lots of moving pieces yeah. so they can't use like a historic yeah building. but i think that's where a lot of the with all sets they all come from kind of real british cathedrals and universities often so i think mm -hmm. gloucester is where a lot of the inspiration for that set in particular came from yeah uh then the the sinks themselves that are in the bathroom obviously had to be specially designed because they would play quite a big role they couldn't just be mm. well they could have been they didn't want them just to be sinks on the wall mm. uh, the production designer Stuart Craig describes the sinks as uh, being designed so they could open like petals of a flower mm, that's um, nice which is lovely imagery and um, we'll discuss kind of th this a bit more when they do crack open <laughs> spoilers <laughs> Lucy <laughs> what? jeez oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah, that's, that's a little bit to say about mm. the bathroom itself. And then um, I do have, this is not a uh, location or set ba based, but it's more of just a little anecdote about the location for the dueling club. Mm. Du dueling club. Um, <laughs> dueling. Uh, dueling. Dueling club. I now understand that this is all just happening in the Great Hall. Right. I, I, right. right. Is it Great Hall? Oh. <laughs> so as a kid... Uh, here's the thing, uh, all the time reading the books I had a very vivid um, image of what the Great Hall looked like I, Everything set there looked exactly the same <gasps> It TV, is! TV. Yeah, isn't that mad? Oh! I always imagined this one scene taking place in my primary school like hall Specifically? Specifically my primary school <laughs> hall like on the little stage that you build with the little like metre squared rostrum things mm. And for some reason, just this one scene was always set in my primary school hall, and every other scene when they mentioned it was the Great Hall was very vividly set in the Great Hall. But for some reason, this one, maybe I was linking it to like PE or something. <laughs> for some reason, this one mm. very, very vividly was always set in like a primary school dinner hall. Right. I have no idea why. I, I, just I'd share that I didn't all. put any thought into it, mm. but. I have not made the connection with it being the Great Hall, but it very clearly is. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking on Google Images. It has like yeah. the big window at the front and the benches yeah. are pushed to the side. Yeah. But and I've it is, never it is in the noticed book that as well, before. isn't it? Oh, I what, think in the film, so. you mean? Mad. Yeah, it, it looks very different. It's kind of as different as you see it get in the films, I think. Mm. But yeah. Hello, listeners. Editing Elizabeth here. This is a part where. Elizabeth in the past heard a very loud noise downstairs and went to go and check it out. There is a very strange pause and then we just kind of carry on talking so I didn't want that to sound strange in the final edit um, so that's what happened. <laughs> now we're going to go on to talking about some of my experiences going to Gloucester Cathedral. So just to say, I learned uh, a few things about the location of Gloucester Cathedral in relation to Harry Potter, obviously. That's all I care about when I go to historical <laughs> sites. 
The first one was, even though they don't really show the stained glass windows, they edited, because <laughs> uh, there's no religion in Harry Potter universe, they edited two like quite religious figures, and I think they're Adam and Eve, but I'm not sure, into mm. looking like wizards. <laughs> so like they deleted the halos over their heads and they put like wands in their hands, oh. I, I believe that's what the change was. And they put like mm -hmm. ropes over them or something. Um, I can't find like a picture of this, but they said that they mm -hmm. did that exp um, specifically. They were very clear mm -hmm. about that. So, and then the other one was that I mentioned before that Gloucester Cathedral is quite proud about its links to Harry Potter, and they have actually kept one of the things that the set designers put on the walls, and it's to hide some of the electrical outlets mm -hmm. because obviously Harry Potter. <laughs> there's no electricity in Hogwarts yeah. um, so they put this like very convincing like panel over and now when you when it's pointed out you can totally see it there's like tape mm. over it and it looks a bit clunky yeah. but they matched the colour so well that the Gloucester Cathedral owners mm. were like oh that actually looks really nice and we'll keep it mm. That's really yeah cool. and um, you can still see the marks where they had to put this like huge tray but this is when we'll get to it when moaning myrtle floods the hallway mm -hmm. and they because they had to protect the floor they put this huge tray and filled the, the tray with water mm. but you can even though they did that to protect the floor they <sighs> you can see the marks of the tray like oh. adhesive mm. that made it stick to the floor <laughs> I mean, they're, they're quite good natured about it now, but at the time, yeah. I imagine they were quite quite angry because it's like yeah. a famously old floor or something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just thought I'd I'd add those little things about nice. usually. It's a really really good one because there's so mm -hmm. many. There's there's things in it from sixth film. There's things from second, and um, oh. yeah. It, it's a really great one to to go they have like a little screen that you can like flick through that's just purely about harry potter and where you mm -hmm. can find the locations nice yeah Lovely. <laughs> thank you elizabeth how informative oh you're welcome <laughs> i can All be right. informative as long as it's about harry potter <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> okay so that concludes this episode of Potter Watch from page to screen. Keep twiddling those dials. Keep each other safe. Keep faith. Good, Good night. night. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> it's not. It's not even. I was about to say it's the only so superstition I follow, but it's not even. It's not even my kind. I, ju I just have to. No, it's, it's like, you know, I don't really think the Queen is that important, but she's comforting, and it's the same kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Such a random parallel to draw. <laughs> but I also I know exactly what you mean. <laughs>